well, my friends. Welcome to your What You Need to Know and your tarot reading for the full moon in Aries coming up on October 17th. My name is Natasha, also known as Nourish Natasha. If you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, welcome back. I'm going to tell you about what's going on with this full moon in Aries that's coming up this week, and then we're going to tap into the tarot energy. This is a collective tarot reading, so I set the intention that it finds the collective, whoever needs to hear it. So congratulations. If you made it here, you're part of the collective. If you like witchcraft, wellness, and everything in between, hit that subscribe button. I put out full free yoga classes and tarot readings for every new moon and full moon here on my YouTube channel um, for free every month. Um, I also have a membership here where we do live tarot, live yoga, live new moon and full moon workshops. Um, but yeah, we're going to get right on into it. So this full moon in Aries is on October 17th. And I'm not going to lie, this one is kind of a doozy. Like I generally don't like to, you know, I try to teach astrology and, you know, tap into the energies and just a way of that what I believe, which is astrology, is just energy that we need to work with, right? It's not necessarily good or bad. But this full moon that's coming up in Aries this week is definitely not, I wouldn't say bad, it's just a little intense, okay? It's an Aries. I mean, I have, you can kind of see this little white fluff right here. This is my dog, Jack. He's an Aries. <laughs> that's kind of the energy. If you are here on my channel and you hear a dog uh, barking in the background of my yoga classes, that's him, okay? That's the Aries energy. It's chaotic. It's loud. It's, you know, I think that Aries gets like the bad rep of being like angry, they're just a little passionate. I'm an Aries Mercury. That's how I communicate, right? So it is definitely, I mean, look, just think about it. Aries is a fire sign, right? Think about the Aries in your life, okay? I wore my Hellfire Club shirt intentionally because that's kind of the vibe, is the Hellfiery kind of vibe. Because on top of that, not only is this full moon in Aries, this is our Hunter's Moon, also known as a Blood Moon. So, you know, pretty intense already. This is also a super moon. So super moon is basically when the moon is just a little bit closer to Earth. And this is our biggest, brightest, closest super moon of the entire year. So we're really going to feel this one. Uh, you know, I think it's definitely going to be a little intense. And we also have some other kind of astrology things happening, which I'm going to talk about a little bit that are kind of emphasizing emphasizing the energy of this full moon in Aries but don't freak out don't worry it's okay I promise it's gonna be fine you know again this is just energy that we can work with and I'm gonna tell you how to work with it so full moon in Aries fire sign Aries in the tarot is ruled by the Emperor which is you know a great card the Emperor is a very positive again I don't really think it's positive or negative but I would say the Emperor is a positive card it's um you know taking the lead in your own life the Emperor is the divine masculine the big boss energy of the tarot he's the culmination of all the kings in the tarot right he is Aries he like sits in his throne with like the ram's heads on the throne and he gets stuff done and he takes control and you know Aries rules the solar plexus chakra so that's that power that confidence um you know your personal power kind of like showing up for yourself and again being the leader that's kind of the vibe of this full moon in Aries in general, full moons are about releasing. That's usually what we do under a full moon is we release, right? New moons are about manifesting, setting intentions as we start the, the moon cycle. And then full moons are these big points, this big culmination of release. However, this full moon in Aries is a very action-based full moon. So I would recommend doing spell work during this full moon. I would recommend, you know, actually maybe manifesting if you're okay with a little bit of chaos energy you know this is actually truly closing out our eclipse season so we just had our eclipse season the moon that started this moon cycle was our new moon solar eclipse in libra so we started this moon cycle with an eclipse and this full moon in aries this is not an eclipse but it is kind of officially kind of closing that eclipse cycle chapter um you know think about aries as the zodiac sign aries is the first on the zodiac wheel so it's that young intense um, you know, fire energy. Uh, and, you know, again, think about the Aries in your life. I have my Aries right here and he is a menace to society and I mean that in the most loving way possible. Again, I love Aries. So um, other kind of astrological happenings that are going to also um, you know, kind of increase the intensity of this full moon. Um, we have Venus is moving from Scorpio to Sagittarius on October 17th, the same day as the full moon. And that's also Venus is moving from a water sign to a fire sign. Sagittarius is chaos, a little bit reckless. And, you know, Venus is our planet of love, attraction, beauty. So, you know, you might feel a little fun and flirty, but it's also kind of a little reckless. It's also very straightforward. It's also very like spontaneous. Like this would definitely be, you know, Venus and Sagittarius, a good time to meet new people, to date, to kind of be a little adventurous in your love life and, and in your, you know, a beauty or your appearance, you know, that's what Venus rules. Um, but again, 
it's fire, it's chaos. We also have Mercury that just moved into Scorpio. So that happened on October 17th. Mercury in Scorpio, Mercury is our planet of communication, tech, travel, but um, think of Mercury as like the messenger, again, that communication bit. In Scorpio, which is our deep, dark, mysterious water sign, uh, you know, it's definitely <laughs> combined with that full moon in Aries. This is a time where like secrets might come out, where you might find that you're like saying things or um, this is really, look, this full moon in Aries is just stay in your lane. Like think before you speak, don't just explode. That's what this is going to feel like. We're going to feel like we want to explode, right? You know, full moon in a fire sign, you know, we're going to feel like we want to kind of burst. We want to yell. We want to scream. This would be a great time to go to like a rage room, you know? And again, I think that there are other emotions and just like anger and sadness, but I think this full moon in Aries is really going to bring out anything that you've been like pent up, anything that you've been bottling up is going to come out most likely. Um, but here's the thing we need to harness this energy and direct it. Um, you know, I was doing, uh, every Monday I do live tarot and astrology. This week it was Tuesday because I was traveling, but in my membership here, we do the live, um, astrology for the week and the tarot for the week. And what I was talking about is that we need to direct the energy. It's all this fire energy. It's all this explosive energy, which can be chaotic and kind of, um, the way I put it was like a controlled burn. Like, you know, we want to kind of harness this fire and direct it at something, direct it at something you're passionate about, direct it at your goals, your wishes, your dreams. You know, this energy can be really awesome if we can just like harness it and kind of keep it in control. So that is the vibe of this full moon in Aries. Aries in the body rules the head, the face, the blood. So maybe you might notice you get maybe a headache or like one of those like pressure migraines in the face, which are like the worst. Um, again, Aries in the tarot rules, the emperor, uh, the solar plexus chakra. If you would like to tap into the energy in a more physical way, again, I put out a full free yoga class for every new moon and full moon as well. So I will have one for this full moon in Aries. It's going to be power yoga. So it's going to be fast, a little speedy, a little powerful, but you know, it'll get the blood flowing. Um, and you can kind of tap in it. I really think that this is a great time to move your body to maybe do um, exercises or workouts or just physical things that make you feel powerful to kind of expel that excess energy, right? Again, that fire energy, channel it into something. I don't care what you do, just channel it into something healthy and productive and, and don't explode all over the place. Okay, that's my advice for this full moon in Aries. Now, I've been rambling at you for like a solid eight and a half minutes. Let's get into the tarot. And I've already shuffled these decks and I noticed that at the bottom of this one is the eight of wands already. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The eight of wands is actually eight arrows kind of being shot through the air. And this is fire. Wands are fire. This is exactly the full moon in Aries energy. It's like firing on all cylinders, like full speed ahead, shooting those arrows that are like on fire. Um, I don't know why I'm thinking. I feel like I make Disney references a lot. I'm thinking of the scene in Mulan where um, they Mulan has like the chance to... Uh, uh, shoot that like rocket into like the mountain and it like misses and it causes that like avalanche and uh, Mushu's like that's the one you miss like that's kind of like what we don't want right is just to like shoot off into oblivion without an actual target like we want to direct the energy like we want to take all that fire and put it into something productive so you know the eight of wands is very like coming in hot coming in fast uh, messenger type of energy so again you might notice that like you're getting some like news or maybe someone's telling you something or like something's coming in um and whatever it is it's spicy why is it spicy that's like that tiktok audio is like the vibe of this full moon in aries why is it spicy all right what do we need to know for this full moon in aries This is the glow in the dark tarot, by the way. It's just your, you know, your average Rider weight deck, but it's glow in the dark. Maybe someday we'll do a reading in the dark. That will be fun. All right, chaos mode perhaps does not wish to work, of course. So, <clears throat> seven of pentacles, planting seeds. Um, you know, the start of the harvest, which again, I think this is a great time. Like I said, this is an action oriented full moon. This would be a great time to plant some seeds, to take that fire, whatever you're passionate about and plant some seeds with it. Like, you know, 
Knight of Wands. There you go. That's exact again, exactly the Aries full moon energy. The Knight of Wands, all knights are on a mission, and the Knight of Wands is on a mission of passion. He is the second fastest knight. The fastest would be the Knight of Swords. This one, you know, the Knight of Wands is what I would kind of say that like controlled burn is. He's fiery. Yes, he is a little reckless. He is a little, you know, uh, explosive. However, again, knights are on a mission. They're moving towards something. And we might be moving towards something very quickly. But sometimes, you know, if we look at it in context with the seven of pentacles, sometimes we plant seeds and then we don't really do anything with it. You know what I mean? Like we plant seeds, we start a journey, we start doing something that we're like, I'm really passionate about this. I want to do this whatever, we kind of plant the seed and then we lose traction. Um, there is uh, a quote that I can't remember who said it, but I remember it because I remember the quote like really spoke to me. Um, a lot of the times we wait for motivation to strike, right? We wait to do something. Well, oh, I'll get I'll get the motivation for it, you know, and then I'll do it. Uh, motivation does is very fleeting. Yes, sometimes we for sure wake up with that like bolt of lightning kind of motivation where we're like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, but it fades very quickly. Um, the quote is like, motivation is not a lightning strike from the gods, it comes from doing things. Like you get more motivation as you start to do the things that you're passionate about. Like you have to nurture that motivation. You can't just wait for the spark of motivation that fades very quickly. You actually have to like harness it and work towards it and like do things with it. So I think that's kind of what this is saying is like plant those seeds, but actually like go and do something with it. How many times have you started a project or a new hobby or like a new thing that you're like, I really want to do that. And then it just like <laughs> nothing like that's not that's not what we want. We actually want to go somewhere with it. Right. Seven of Wands. Um, Seven of Wands is a defensive energy. You can see he's kind of like fighting off, fending off people there. The Seven of Wands, though, comes after a six, the Six of Wands, which is a victory. Um, you know, we might feel like, I think I would say for sure we're going to feel like we're on the defensive under this full moon in Aries. Like, you might feel like you need to fight somebody. Uh, don't fight anybody. <laughs> uh, you know, but fight for what you're passionate about. Fight for what you love. Fight for your right to party, as the BC boys say, you know, because then... Nine of Pentacles, we will have that abundant harvest. The Nine of Pentacles, by the way, is also lurking at the bottom of the other deck that we're gonna clarify with. So we love to see it. Nine of Pentacles is one of my favorite cards. Very single independent energy of having your own ab abundant harvest. It's like the first of many abundant harvests. It's like the first um, reaping of the rewards of the hard work that you have put into, um, you know, kind of by yourself. Whereas the Ten of Pentacles is like a um, community abundance. It's like a legacy, long-term family type of abundance. The Nine of Pentacles is like you having that first abundant harvest from whatever it is that you started that you're like, wow, I did that. I did that and I did it by, you know, all by myself. I did it like, you know, it's that first like, I, it, I'm, what am I trying to, there's like something that I'm, a word that I'm trying to look for. It's like that first kind of sign of like, I did it. I started this journey and I did this for me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's making sense at all, but that's kind of what's coming up. The Hermit card of Virgo with the star. I love, this is, this is nice. This is nice energy. Fun fact, the uh, lantern that the Hermit is holding has a star in it and it is the star because the hermit is guided by his north star by um your north star whatever that is that thing that keeps you going your true authentic self that is what the star is the star is a card of aquarius and that is what guides the hermit the hermit it's like if you don't maybe if you don't feel ready to plant the seeds to take that first step on this journey, if you maybe you know, kind of know what you want, but you're like, mm, I'm not 100% certain, um, take a moment to go inwards, right? The hermit and what should guide you is your North Star is being authentic to yourself, your true authentic expression. The star is hope, the star is light at the end of the tunnel. And sometimes it's hard for us to see that when we're that deep in hermit mode, when we're kind of like, maybe recovering from something or we had to like pull back and this, I would say that this full moon in Aries is when we start to come out of our shell again <laughs> like we start to uh come out of the hermit mode but when you're coming out of the hermit mode just remember to stay authentic to you um the way I like to describe the star when I say like your north star and like how you should let it guide you authentically is um Jack Sparrow's compass in parts of the Caribbean you know it doesn't point north it points to what he wants the most and that's kind of like the star energy is like you should follow um your 
heart. Follow your North Star. Nobody else is, just yours. So, all right, let's clarify. This is like one of my favorite decks. It's the Ethereal Visions Tarot, the Lunar Edition. It's so beautiful. Chaos Mode said not today. Don't give me the tower at the bottom of the deck. I don't even want to look at it. Four of Swords. Um, this is actually a card of rest. We have the Hermit. We have the Four of Swords. I really think that instead of saying, like, it's time to rest, I'm really thinking that this is, like, stay in your own lane, like I said. Um, just <laughs> pull back your energy. If people are being dumb, you pull back. Like, because, again, this is not the time under this full moon in Aries you play with fire, you're going to get burned. I know that's like the most cliche saying ever, but that's what's going to happen. <laughs> um, you know, especially with that Mar Mercury and Scorpio, um, Venus and Sag Sagittarius. This is, uh, we also have Mars and Cancer right now. This is like, you don't want to, I keep hearing Michael Jackson's, you want to be starting something, you don't want to be starting something. Okay. That's just pull back your energy with seven of wands. Again, yes, it's okay to be on the defensive. It's okay to stand up for yourself and again, like fight for yourself, but we're not trying to start stuff. You know what I mean? Um, it's like, I won't start the fight, but I'll certainly end it kind of energy. Like it's okay to defend your victory, right? Seven of wands, defend your place at the top of the mountain, defend your place after the six of wands, but we're doing so in like a graceful way. I feel like with that four of swords, death, card of Scorpio, death and rebirth. Who's coming out with that? the hermit again definitely what was i saying it's definitely like a death to the hermit kind of vibes we're coming out of our shell coming out of hermit mode let me just look at how beautiful these cards are can we just okay um we're just coming out of being hermitified coming out of like that isolation period um which is scary certainly it's not easy um but it's welcome we are kind of ready for the death and rebirth um, I've been kind of talking about this in the weekly tarot and things that we do, um, here in my membership, but like coming out of, uh, someone said on the live, what did they call it? Like morbid, morbid isolation or something. I can't remember, but it's like, um, you know, sometimes when we pull back, we pull back into that hermit energy. We really just go inward. We kind of withdraw from the land of the living, um, it, coming back into, the real world into like being social and like into the land of the living as I call it it's it's definitely scary and it can kind of feel like a death and a rebirth but it's worth it I just noticed in this deck there's like a little skull down here on the hermit so for sure death to isolating yourself I would say um this would be a great full moon to like get out there to let that fire you know kind of under your butt like get you um out of hermit mode for sure ace of pentacles and something really lovely could come out of it some uh new opportunities new pentacles new jobs new um you know that's literally like a gold coin being handed to you from the universe but i don't think we're gonna get that unless we put ourselves out there page of swords putting yourself out there going on some new adventures kind of seeing where the wind takes you uh as it were um king of pentacles can't be mad about that. I thought it was going to be the Queen of Pentacles for a second. That pairing has been following me a lot lately, but we have the Wheel of Fortune and the King of Pentacles. A new abundant cycle awaits, my friends. We just have to kind of start the cycle again with that directed energy. We're not just like going full force ahead without a direction. We are, it's a controlled burn. It's like we have all this passion and this power behind it, but it really needs to be focused, um, balanced in the King of Pentacles energy, stability, structure, foundation. The King of Pentacles is the King of Pentacles because he worked his butt off to get there. And he has um, structure and stability and foundation that allows him to be abundant without, um, not, I'm going to say not without trying. He he tried already, like he worked his butt off and now it kind of goes off without a hitch. And isn't that the new cycle that we would all love is to just have abundance without uh, you know, like having to work so hard for it, but it comes with the hard work in the past. So set yourself up for success, you know, let this fire kind of drive you to, because if you think about it, the ace of pentacles is the start of the pentacles cycle, right? And then the king of pentacles is the very end, you know, obviously we have the ten of pentacles, but then the king of pentacles is like the end of the court card. So this is where we start and this is where we end, you know, like 
it's you have to start here to end up here but i just love how i'm just gonna like <laughs> i just love how these cards look all right we are going to clarify with some oracle cards and then that's all folks there's like this one piece of hair that's driving me insane i'm like could you just <laughs> if you keep seeing me mess with it just it's fine i just got my hair uh done that's like a little bit more silver but it's like so crisp <laughs> and just hard to control because it's so fresh all right any final notes that we need to know transmute absolutely transmutation transmutation is a little bit different than uh transformation transmutation transformation is more of like one thing completely ends and something else completely begins transmutation is taking one thing and making another so remnants of the original thing are still there but it's like all new it's a different sort of energy it's like alchemy it's like turning one thing into another channeling maybe again that like really fiery kind of chaotic energy into something calm and beautiful and successful right that's kind of what we should be focusing on is transmuting that energy past life in this deck there's a past life and a new life card and the past life card speaks to that past life is on its way out we're transmuting our past life into our new life meditate this card came up in the live reading that we did yesterday too um you know i think Meditation can be a great way to transmute that kind of fiery energy. If you feel like you're in the fire, you feel like you're in the chaos, take some time to meditate. I know it's very hard to do, especially when you're in that like fiery chaotic energy to like pause and breathe and take a second, but it can be so helpful. And just remember that you don't have to do like kind of the full force meditation where it's like no thoughts, just sit there and like try to empty your brain do try a guided meditation try something that's a little bit more you know if, if you find that you fidget a lot if you find that your mind kind of race while you're races while you're meditating try a guided meditation or something like that to again transmute that energy there we go power this is like the most aries card um this full moon in aries is all about power personal power um taking again that power and kind of harnessing it for the greater good for your goals for your dreams it's a very very powerful full moon for sure affluence and time oh you know it's this big burst of energy that we're having with this full moon in aries you know i it, i'm not saying that like you're gonna have everything you know the affluence everything you've ever dreamed of immediately that's not how it works it is certainly going to take time but i think this is going to be kind of like the kickoff to it this full moon in aries is going to be like this huge surge that maybe pushes you pretty f forward but we're not going to make it all the way to the end right it's like kind of tortoise in the hair energy when we get that like really fiery really fast sort of energy yes it can take us pretty far pretty quickly but that's not always a good thing right we want to slow and steady wins the race my friends that's kind of this full moon in Aries is going to make us want to like go fast it's like it's gonna make us want to just kind of like launch off into another dimension don't do that refine the energy transmute the energy direct with intention I'm seeing like the air traffic controllers like with those orange like lights like direct the energy and then use the momentum of this fiery full moon in Aries to kind of push yourself forward. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I hope this resonates, my friends. Please let me know in the comments if it did. Again, if you like witchcraft, wellness, everything in between, hit that subscribe button. Or if you want some live yoga, live tarot, live workshops, you can hit that join button. Come join me in my membership here. Um, I have free classes here on YouTube always. I have witchcraft, wellness resources, courses, ebooks. If you're looking to start your witchcraft wellness journey, I host retreats here in Salem, Massachusetts. It's where I live. Um, but I hope you have a wonderful full moon in Aries and I'll see you next time.